Welcome back to OMG The Cloud. Today we're talking about the traffic web proxy. This is a container first, container native web proxy for all of your Docker containers. Now, if you spend any time in containers, one thing you may have come up across is port overlap is a big problem in containers. So if you have multiple web servers or web services running on a, a Docker host, well, now they're all fighting over the HTTP and HTTPS ports, port 80, port 443. Well, so what do you end up doing? You end up putting a bunch of different services on different ports, random obscure ports, and then you gotta remember what they are and all this, it's just a mess. And then you don't ha usually have good SSL in front of that. So the way traffic solves your problems is it sits in front and it's gonna proxy all of those connections to your web servers. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna listen to your Docker environment for particular tags that the containers themselves have. And those tags are going to be how it gets configured. You don't have to go into traffic and configure the service. The service itself will configure traffic. So let's take a look at this. This sounds interesting. This is just a demo version I have here just to show you what the web interface looks like. Not much to see at this particular point. So we should probably go ahead and just look directly at the backend services to see what we're uh, what we're looking at. This here is an example configuration file. So let's just step through some of the points on it. We're gonna be deploying this with Docker stack deploy. So this is a little different than what we've done in the past. This is a more orchestrated container deployment uh, and I recommend this method. So first off we have our network. So all of the services that traffic is proxying need to be on this same network. This is an overlay network and it is attachable. We'll cover that in just a minute. Services, so uh, the traffic service itself, and it is exposing port 80 and port 443. It's gonna go ahead and grab those ports on your host. It is also using the proxy network as we've named it, and it just has a couple of volumes. So it needs to attach to your docker.soc. This is how it's listening to Docker's API directly to grab those tags we talked about earlier. And we also have an externally mounted folder for the Let's Encrypt SSL certificates. Ah, yes. So we're also going to wrap all of this up in real SSL certs that auto renew, and that's native to traffic, so it really works quite well. And then this is just some of the commands that we're passing into traffic for its startup. Beyond that, it's fairly stateless. It doesn't have any other configuration files. Uh, the only thing that's external at all is the SSL certificates. So these are gonna cover all of your configuration points. And then for your environment variables, as you can see here, so depending on where your domain is hosted that you're gonna be using for your Let's Encrypt certificates, if you're using AWS, using Route 53, then this configuration will work just fine for you. If you use a different DNS provider, go ahead and take a look over at Traffic's website. They have a whole list of all the DNS services that are supported. And then down here at the bottom of this config file, this is going to be fairly similar to what your uh, proxied services are gonna run. We're actually going to proxy Traffic's own web server so that we can see that as a proxied service and we're calling that one traffic.dmz.omgthecloud.com. Just like in the other services, uh, we need to tell it that it's enabled, and then you need to tell traffic what port that service is running on. So traffic's own web UI runs on 8080. So we're telling traffic, use port 8080, and go ahead and build your resolver based on that. One thing you'll notice in here, unlike most containers, where you're accessing a web interface or something like, like that, you'll notice in this configuration file, we're not exposing any ports for that service. Now we are exposing traffic itself. It needs, obviously it, it needs to talk directly, uh, but that is for the proxy. We're not exposing port 8080 and on your subsequent web services that you are proxying, you're not gonna be exposing any ports like this. So port overlap, that problem goes away and you're able to easily give it uh, a namespace that you can remember quite easily. So, you know, web service dot, you know, whatever your domain is dot com. You don't have to remember port numbers or anything like that. It takes care of all that for you. So without further ado, let's get into this. First thing we need to do is create that overlay network. So that's going to be Docker network create dash D overlay. That tells us that it's an overlay network. And we're also giving it the 
attachable switch, and then the name of the network itself, which I'm just calling proxy. You can name it something else if you like. There we go, and that has been created. So that is a overlay network, and it is attachable, which is important. Okay, with the network created, we also need to make that external folder for the Let's Encrypt certificates. It needs somewhere to put those. Victor Let's Encrypt, there we go. And now we should go ahead and launch that service. Docker stack deploy dash C, in the name of our compose file, and then the name of the service traffic. So that's gonna go ahead and deploy our traffic. It's gonna go reach out to AWS to validate that I own that domain uh, via the API key. And once it gets that validation, it's going to reach over to Let's Encrypt and say, hey, we're good, please issue me this certificate. And once it has that in place, it's going to plumb it all together and give us our proxy. Okay, let's check in and see if it's up and running. So if you remember from that config file, I gave it traffic.dmz.omgthecloud.com. Ooh, potential security risk. It's not done pulling that SSL cert. That's what we've got there. But let's take a look, advanced, view certificate. Ah, yeah. So this is still exposing the default traffic certificate. So it's not done pulling that cert in the background. If you remember from my PFSense series on Acme certificates, uh, if you haven't seen that, I recommend you uh, click that link right there and go back and take a look at it. But it's essentially the same mechanism. We're using DNS validation, validating we own the domain so that it will issue the certificate. It's the exact same process, uh, just with a different service. In fact, you can use the same API keys, so it's the same thing. So it just needs a little time to get that cert back. Okay, and just after waiting a couple minutes and refreshing that page, it did in fact come back with our proper SSL certificate. So um, I don't think this comes through in the screen cap, unfortunately, but it does show a real uh, Let's Encrypt um, validated cert. Anyway, you can see from the icon there that this is a real cert, otherwise it would show a, a red, red flag on that. So we're up and running. We have our HTTP and HTTPS endpoints. Uh, this is also doing HTTP to HTTPS redirect. So if you give it just a plain HTTP, it will uh, upgrade that and run it on SSL. So this is the first building block of this. And the traffic web UI itself is actually the first proxied service that we have underneath this. We're gonna spin up a couple more services in our next video and show you what else you can put behind this and how you can control that, set your namespaces, all these types of things. So thanks for watching, please subscribe. Please hit that like button, it helps me out a lot. And I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thanks for watching.